of the reasons that we might be interested in measuring our blood, glu blood glucose and ketones pre-season is there is a number of factors that are associated with this and namely the first one is actually just general overall health. If you look at some of the markers of all-cause mortality and health, there's basically three major things. One is high variability, so you can look at that if you're interested in that, but basically having a high high variability is associated with being healthier. Um, VO2 max, most people who are associated with know what that means, um, being having a high cardiorespiratory fitness. And then the last is um, low and stable blood glucose. So if you look at people who have higher blood glucose levels, generally they are actually living a little bit less. It's not actually that healthy. So that's one of the reasons why we might be interested in taking this. And with athletes, we often see, despite them being thinking athletes are healthy, we often actually see quite high levels of blood glucose, even at rest, so in the fasted state, which is actually not optimal. And if you think about what we're really trying to achieve, especially as age group triathletes, whether it's the ultra runners or whatever you, whether it might be, we're in it because we're trying to be healthier, we're trying to live a healthier lifestyle. So it's actually a really important marker to know and to be ready for. So I guess with glucose tolerance testing, you know, that's generally done by a practitioner, it's done by a doctor. But as it's quite hard to do sometimes, it's quite hard to get that in done by a professional, but you can actually do it yourself. You can do it with your own blood glucose meter. And the best time to do it is you kind of want to do it just in your normal state. So when you're not actually having any intervention, so you get some reasonable baseline. And then if you're going through an intervention and it might be a low carb diet, it might be some training, then that would be the time where you would start to take it again after the intervention. So basically ketones and, and glucose prior to the intervention, whatever you're going to do for the early stages of the season and kind of when you're maintaining status quo, as we like to call it. And then once you've gone through that training phase or you've gone and changed your diet, you've done something that you hope is going to make a change, that's the point and when you would then continue to take it throughout and hope you will see a change in your blood glucose and ketone levels. So, so another good reason why you'd be interested in taking your blood glucose and ketone levels is actually from a fat oxidation and fuel utilization perspective. So if you know what it is prior to an intervention, you can kind of get a good idea of how you are utilizing fats as a fuel source and also glucose as a fuel source. So for example, if you took your baseline, you went for a ride, you took your glucose and ketones before that ride, then you went riding, you rode for three hours and you didn't take in any fuel, what you would hope to see if you had good fat adaptation with the glucose would remain stable and the ketones would actually go up. If you're not that great at using fats as a fuel, what we generally see is ketones don't really move too much, they don't really get elevated in the blood, and blood glucose will go down. But what's really important is that it is at a low and steady state, so we call it level two, below that first aerobic threshold, so you have to keep it at a very low intensity. So there are a few ways that you can do the testing. The most simplest way is through the blood. So you could use a, a simple blood glucose measure like this one here. Basically, you, this can measure ketones and blood glucose. And the only difference is you use a different strip. So a different strip goes inserted here. You have a glucose strip and you have a ketone strip. So that would measure blood glucose and then it would also measure ketones or beta hydroxybutyrate, which is measured in the, through the blood. And another way that you can measure ketones is through the breath, which is using by using a breath analyzer, which is one through here. And this actually doesn't measure beta hydroxybutyrate, it measures acetoacetate, which is actually a different thing. Someone once explained it to me is that the BHB, beta hydroxybutyrate, is more kind of what you're storing, whereas acetoacetate is more what you're using, but they're not actually that related, so they're not really correlated. Um, and then finally, if you really want to go to town, you can actually use these um, continuous blood glucose measures. So this is a Dexcom G G5, which actually gets inserted into the stomach um, for a needle, and you can wear it for a series of a week or so, and you can actually get blood glucose continuously all the time, which is actually a really, it's really interesting, and I think it's a great way to know what foods affect you in certain ways. So you could, um, so there are a few ways that you can you can do it, but I think what's really important is that you know what you're looking at. Generally, I'll look at my um, my, my breath generally after training, as I won't really look at it before, um, because I'm more interested in how I'm using the ketones at that point. But then I'll also do pre-post measures with the blood glucose as well. So, what numbers should, in terms of what numbers you should be looking for, it's a, I guess it's all about context before content. Um, it depends on what, when you're taking it. So, if you're taking it in a fasted state first thing in the morning when we look at blood glucose, it's generally we're looking to see a number between four and five. So that's the optimal range for health as we know it. 
Um, in terms of ketones, it, it's kind of, it's not, we don't really know precisely, but if we look at the literature, you look at the research, most people will say you've got BHB levels in the blood above, above 0.5, then you are theoretically in blood um, in ketosis. And it's not that easy to get to that number, to be honest, and you really have to have a very low carbohydrate value. So, um, and I've actually talked to some researchers at length about this, and no one really knows where the number 0.5 has come from. And some would say it might be even as low as 0.3. Um, but that's generally what people look for to be, and to be in clinical ketosis, you do have to be above 0.5. Um, but that's being said that if you are thinking about looking at your blood glucose pre-post exercise, it's very dependent on the type of exercise you, you're doing. What many people don't understand is glucose is associated with lactate. So if you have a high lactate, you will therefore have a high blood glucose because the two are interrelated. Lactate is theoretically a glucose molecule. So if you do high intensity exercise, you will have an elevated blood glucose, which is why it's really important to know the context of what you're doing. So if you are doing these pre-post pre tests, make sure that it is of a low intensity, not after a high intensity exercise, because you certainly will see very elevated blood glucose, even between the, into the 60s or 70s.